Hi there, today I'm going to interview my friend Mike Mosley and we'll be talking about his PhD work. But before talking about the big signs, we will try to gradually develop the concept. I hope you're going to enjoy the interview. Let's go for it. Okay, interference is a physical phenomenon that happens when two waves meet. When they meet, they can either work together or work against one another. You can think about this like two people in a boat. If they're both rowing in synchronization, they can work together and it moves the boat forward. However, if they're working against one another, then they row out of synchronization and the boat doesn't move. In the same way, when two waves meet, they can either work together and add what we call constructively, and that gives a large amplitude to the wave, or they can work against one another and do what we call destructive interference, which cancels each other out and you have a zero amplitude to the wave. So interference happens for any wave-like phenomenon. Uh, classically, you can think about waves traveling across the surface of water causing ripples, or you can think about vibrations on a string which create sound waves. Um, so you can think about a guitar. When you play a harmonic on a guitar string, this is the interference between waves traveling to the left and then waves traveling to the right which have been reflected from the bridge of the guitar. And these either add up to give a large vibration of the string or they cancel out and you'll find that parts of the string don't move at all. Uh, you can also think about ripples on a pond when you drop a pebble into the water. If you do this in the center of a pond, uh, then you'll just see circles spreading outwards as the ripple pattern. However, if you drop the pebble next to the edge of a pond, you'll see the interference between waves traveling towards the edge and waves which have been reflected. And you'll see more of a diagonal crisscross pattern where you have the waves summing up to give large changes in the height of the water, or they'll cancel out and you'll just have a flat surface. Okay, so you can also see interference for quantum mechanical wave uh, phenomena, uh, such as electromagnetic waves, or uh, quantum mechanical wave functions for particles. So things that you might be used to seeing for uh, electromagnetic waves would be reflections from an oil surface on top of water. Uh, this is the interference between light that's being reflected from the top surface of the oil layer and light that's being reflected from the bottom surface of the oil layer. Uh, sometimes you see very brightly coloured butterfly wings and these are actually to do with the nanostructure of the wing and it's interference from light which has been reflected from two different parts from inside the nanostructure and you find that only one colour interferes constructively. Uh, fiber optics actually show interference with the modes that they support because within a fiber optic light travels uh, and bounces from one side to the other so you get interference between light that's travelling to the right and light that's travelling to the left. So the double slit experiment is an experiment in physics that we use to visualize constructive and destructive interference. To do this, we place a screen in front of the wave and we only form two slits in the screen to let the wave pass through. We then measure the, what we call an interference pattern behind the other side of the screen. And for different wave phenomena, this will correspond to different physical properties behind the screen. For classical waves, such as ripples on a water surface, uh, this will the height of the ripple which you measure. You'll either get very large ripples or you'll have regions where the water is completely flat. And in the interference pattern you actually go from constructive to destructive interference alternating. So you'll alternate between large ripples and flat surface. For sound waves which are also classical you'll alternate between constructive regions of very loud sound and destructive regions of quiet sound. Now, quantum mechanically it's slightly different because the interference of the wave when it travels through the double slit experiment is actually a single photon or a single electron interfering with itself. In essence, the photon or electron travels through both slits at once. But you see the same wave-like interference properties. So for photons and light, you see fringes that are very bright, where you have constructive interference, or fringes that are very dark. Now for quantum mechanical waves, such as for electrons, uh, the amplitude, it defines the probability of detecting the electron there. So you have regions with a very high probability and you'll detect a lot of electrons. We have regions of very low probability and you won't detect any electrons in the dark fringes.
So to describe a vortex wave function, let's first consider just a standard wave. So the first example you might be familiar with is standing on the beach and looking out to the sea. When you see the waves coming towards you, you'll see lines, which are the crests of the wave, and these are parts of the wave that are all in sync with each other. Now, this is two-dimensional, so if we now consider a three-dimensional example, you can think about the pressure wave from a bomb when it explodes. Uh, we see a spherical surface expanding outwards. This is slightly complicated because the bomb sends energy in all directions, uh, so it helps to just consider a small section, a zoom in, of the spherical surface, uh, which is actually a flat plane. Uh, now, the bomb is only something which occurs once, but if we want to think about regular repeating waves or oscillations, then this is equivalent to a stack of planes, one after one another, a bit like a stack of lasagna sheets of pasta. Now, this is what we call a plane wave, and it's your standard classical wave. But if we want to transform this into a vortex wave function, it's very similar to the transformation between a stack of lasagna pasta sheets and to a fusily piece of pasta, where we've distorted and twisted the wave function, so there's now this rotation and spiraling nature to the wave. This twist and deformation causes the wave to interfere with itself along the center of the piece of pasta. So you get destructive interference. Uh, for light, this means you'll never see any light in the center and it will always be dark. And for quantum mechanical particles, it means that there's zero probability of detecting the particle along the center. So optical vortices have a line through the center of the beam where destructive interference occurs. This means if you look at a cross section of the beam, what you see is a bright ring with a dark center. And you can do experiments where particles are attracted to this dark center and held in place in the center of the vortex beam in what is called optical tweezing. You can then move around the laser beam and the particle moves with the laser. Uh, you can also use this dark central region to allow higher resolution imaging in what's known as STED super resolution microscopy. And this is because you limit the emission from your sample to this small darker region. Now, when you deform and twist the wave function, it gives it a sudden rotation. And actually, when you've got an optical tweezer and you're holding a particle there, you can also have what's called an optical spanner effect, where you cause the particle to rotate because you're imparting orbital angular momentum onto the particle. Now, when thinking about electron wave functions, which is what I was looking at during my PhD, this rotation actually means you have rotating current and it gives the vortex electron a magnetic moment. And the idea of the research behind electron phase shaping and vortex electron beams is to get more information from magnetic samples in an electron microscope because the vortex electron has this magnetic moment which is more sensitive to the magnetic properties of your sample. Now to summarize today's interview. In order for an interference phenomena to happen, two waves should meet each other and when they meet they can work together giving constructive patterns or against each other giving destructive interference patterns and waves are very common in our nature you can think of a classical wave for example uh, a ripples in a water surface or sound wave propagating through the air and for quantum mechanical waves you can think of as a photon or light waves or also a quantum mechanical probabilistic wave function then we discussed about double slit experiments. Double slit experiment is a very interesting technique to see interference patterns. Here uh, you have a wave source and then double slit and then a screen to see the interference patterns. Depending on which wave source you use, your interference patterns looks like, okay, constructive and destructive for sure, but the constructive would be either brighter if you use light wave or would be louder if you use sound wave or would be a higher probable places where an electron can be found if you use electron quantum mechanical wave function. Similarly, the destructive one would be just an opposite for light, darker, sound, quieter, electron, less probable or even zero probability of finding an electron. Then we developed the idea about the vortex wave. What were the vortex wave? The best way to think about them was if you take your plane wave like as a lasagna sheet and then you twist them um, sort of like this fusely and the central line of a twisting over here is the place where the destructive interference happens and the wave interfere with itself in this condition 
This kind of vortex wave has a lot of application. They are used for optical tweezer, uh, optical spanners, high resolution microscopy, magnetic imaging in electron microscopy and so forth. Well, that was all for today and I hope you enjoyed this interview session I have started. Thank you for your love and support until now and let's see who will be our next guest. Thank you again. See you next time. It's green. Can you, is it recording? Yes. Okay, so we'll see if you can hear any of the wind or the cars around. And you should be able to hear my voice quite clearly, hopefully. Yeah, and then maybe you can then, me. Okay, so I'm talking to you, yeah. you ask questions. Exactly. It's interesting you ask that because, yeah, 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 we can do that.